<laughs> guys, another indie fed is on its way out. Now, guys, I don't want that to be the case. I'm a pro wrestling fan. But let's call it what it is. AEW is dying now that CM Punk is gone. Cody Rhodes is gone. They don't really have much left except for some money. But it doesn't really matter who they sign because they've got a huge roster. They just don't know how to write them to do anything worth the fuck. They think that signing a bunch of Japanese people will somehow help them compete with the WWE. I'm JB Gunner. This is Heel Nation. Let me tell you why they're about to die. Now, make no mistake about it. I don't want them to die. I love pro wrestling. I've been here since the beginning, bruh. All the WrestleManias, the wrestling classic, all the wrestling pay-per-views, Crockett Promotions, WCW. I've been here for a very, very long time. I get it, you kids love your little Japanese flippity floppers and shit like that. I get it. I get it. It's fun to watch. It's a trampoline shit. It's why people like the Hardys and things like that. I get it. But however, to be a uh, uh, money-making wrestling company... You have to put on weekly episodic stories. You have to make movies that would give people a reason to watch, a people to be emotionally, a reason for people to be emotionally connected. And with the exception of MJF, there's just nobody in the company that's happened with until a recent signing, which we'll also talk about in this video. Guys, I believe AEW was literally dying. Now, I don't, when I say that, I don't know how long it will actually last. It could be five more years. It could be three more years. It could be 20 more years. But as we saw with the leadership of Tony Khan, I want you to let this sink in for just a second. Tony Khan let his number one draw go for Jungle Boy. Jungle Boy Jack. Let, say that again, JB. Tony Khan... Let his number one draw go for Jungle Boy. But look, let's go ahead and let's go ahead. Now I understand you guys are an AEW fan, and I like I said, I don't want them to go anywhere. I don't personally like the content because I don't like Japanese people. I don't like trans transgenders beating up women. I don't, I'm not really a big fan of Tony Khan and his liberal ways. And in his very liberal ways, I don't mean liberal, oh, I do mean liberal politically, but his liberal ways with the pen, where he just writes down match cards and no real stories, and we saw it. We saw the pictures. I think that's a problem. Because if you're not telling stories, you're not going to hook an audience emotionally. But I want to tell you, I'm going to show you why I think AEW was dying. First of all, let's just take something simple. Let's go with the roster itself. Because I hear a lot of people saying, it's no big deal that he lost CM Punk. Guys, he does pay-per-views. He doesn't have an AEW network. I need you to understand how Tony Khan makes money. AEW makes money, which they don't currently, through ticket sales, that's attendance numbers, through pay-per-view view buys, which we clearly understand in TV deals. Sponsorships are involved and things like that. But as you clearly see, there's not a lot of sponsors going in with AEW. But I want you to look at the roster for just a second. AR Fox, is he going to, uh, I want you, we're going to use these names because I want you to see they have nobody. I want you to ask yourself, which one of these people can draw a dime which one of these people are people that you and I, the, 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 the wrestling audience, would pay to go see? A.R. Fox? No. Aaron Solo? No. And most casual wrestling fans don't even know who these people are. Action Andretti? No. Adam Cole, baby? Yes, but barely. Could a company run and be led by Adam Cole. Could Adam Cole be the face of a company? No. Don't believe me? Look at an ROH. Was ROH ever a big thing? No. And that's what Adam Cole, the Young Bucks, and all them people over there. They were over there in ROH. Well, they failed. 
So basically, what AEW is, is ROH and Japan combined with people that the WWE releases. Is that fair? Adam Copeland. Yes, he's a star, but he is old. And I will say this about Adam Copeland. Is he does bring emotions. The Adam Copeland edge thing is the best thing in AEW right now. Until one of them gets hurt. Because that's one of the problems with AEW is they have such a, a crazy flippity flop style. Everybody gets hurt. Do I think Edge or, or Christian will get hurt? Do I think they will make that mistake and do the flippity flips? No. I don't. They're, they're a little bit too professional for that. But Adam Copeland is the only one on this roster that could headline a pay-per-view and draw money. Well, except for MJF. We'll get to these. So Adam Copeland, one. We got one. And how much money? I'm not sure. Alex Reynolds, no. Uh, Andrade El Idolo, hell no. Angelo Parker, no. Angelico, no. Anthony Bowens, no. Anthony Ogogo, no. And by the way, you casual wrestling fans, let me know if you even know who any of these motherfuckers are. <laughs> Ari Davari, no. Austin Gunn, no. Bandito, no. Big Bill, no. Billy Gunn from the 1975, no. <laughs> 1995, no. Bishop Khan, no. The Blade, no. Blake Christian, no. Boulder, nope. Brandon Cutler, nope. Brian Cage, you know what? He actually, I think that with the right booking, Brian Cage could be something. Brian Cage was fabulous with Karrion Cross and Impact Wrestling. But he gets with a this jackass, and he doesn't even get booked right. He's got the, Vince McMahon would turn Brian Cage into a beast. Brody King, no, remember, we're talking about people that you would pay to go see. I want, like, in, in the, think about the marquee. Bro, Brody King versus uh, uh, Buddy Matthews. No. Brian Danielson. Yes. So we have two. Bronson. No. Buddy Matthews. No. The Butcher. Nope. Cash Wheeler. Okay, so FTR. They are the best tag team in the world. We'll give it three. But even in tag teams, you're not going to go pay to see. What's a, nobody wants to see a main event that's a tag team match. Chris Jericho, three. But Chris Jericho now was fat. He's older. But I'll give you Chris Jericho. Christian Cage, um, main eventer, someone you'd pay to go see only if he was wrestling Edge. I'm not going to give you Chris Jer Christian. Christian's not a main event guy. Adam, Adam, Adam Edge, Edge, Brian Danielson, and Chris Jericho. And Chris Jericho at this point isn't even a main event guy. But I would pay to see Edge and Jericho. Christopher Daniels, nope. Chuck Taylor, nope. Claudio Castanoli, Cesaro, eh. Not main event. Now, I wouldn't pay to go see him. Not, not marquee. Cole, Cole Carter. Nope. Colton Dunn. Nope. Dan Housen. Nope. Daniel Garcia. Nope. Dante Martin. Nope. Do you even know who any of these people are? Dax Harwood. He goes with the FTR. Dralistico. Nope. Dustin Rhodes. Let's be honest. As much as I love Dustin Rhodes, can Gold Dust be the face of a company? Uh, no, no, he cannot. And let's be honest, he's going to the WWE when it's all over. Dutch, uh, no. Eddie Kingston, no. EJ Duduka, nope. Ethan Page, not with no writing. Evil Uno, nope. Griff Garrison. Nope. Do you guys know who any of this gay, these people are? Hangman Adam Page. <laughs> no. No. The fake cowboy? Come on, man. Hook. No, they're not booking him right. They should have booked him as Taz. Uh, Isaiah Cassidy. Nope. Jack Perry. Jungle Boy. Nope. Jack Hager. <laughs> nope. 
Jay Lethal. Nope. Jay White. Just because he's a star in Japan doesn't mean he's a real life star. Jeff Hardy. <laughs> he's actually main event something. But even him, nobody would pay to see him main event shit or Matt. Jeff Jarrett. <laughs> Just said, nope. John Silver. Just, nobody. <laughs> Jeff Jarrett ain't main event shit right now. John Silver. Nope. Johnny TV. Just Johnny Nitro. Nope. John Moxley. Okay, fine. Ambrose, four. We're up to four, I think, right? Josh Woods. Nope. Juice Robinson. Nope. Any of them Japanese motherfuckers? No. I'm not, even though he's not Japanese, the people that made their name in New Japan? Nope. Keith Lee. Come on, man. He got... <laughs> that motherfucker turned into an old man real quick, didn't he? Kenny Omega. Maybe you'll go pay to see him. Five. Like if he was headlining. But even then, most I don't think he could headline a WWE pay-per-view. Kill switch, nope. Kip Sabian, nope. Commander, nope. Take a shit, take a sheeta. Abushi, nope, no, no, nobody knows none of them people. Kyle Fletcher, nope. Kyle O'Reilly, eh? Good, but not main event. Not someone you pay to go see. Lance Archer, not with the booking that they have there. WWE, if they had Jake the Snake as his manager, they would have turned Lance Archer into a fucking monster. Lee Johnson, nope. Lee Moriarty, nope. Luther, nope. Malachi Black, if he would have been booked right, yeah. But he hasn't been. So I'll give you House of Black. House of Black, you can, I, I don't know. Mark Briscoe, nope. Mark Davis, nope. Matt Hardy, nope. Mark Quinn, nope. Matt Jackson, absolutely not. The Young Bucks, like I said, they were in Ring of Honor, all that shit. When was Ring of, Honor, Ring of Honor actually ever a top promotion? They weren't. Matt Seidel, nope. Max Caster, nope. Nakao's Nakazawa. Uh, Mike Santana, Miro, nope. Because they didn't book him right. They turned him into a video game nerd the minute he got there. MJF, yes, six. Orange Cassidy, absolutely not. Parker Bordeaux, no. Paul White, the giant, doesn't matter. They don't have him booked. Painter L Zero, no. Peter Avalon, no. Powerhouse Hobbs could be if booked right. But they don't book him right. Nick Wayne, no. Orange, Orangey Cassidy, no. Hell no. QT Marshall, nope. These are all scrubs. Ray Phoenix, nope. He could, but scrub. Ricky Starks, he could be good in the future, but nobody would still pay to see him right now. Roderick Strong, nope. Rush, nope. Sammy Guevara, hell no. Samoa Joe, yes, but he's getting a little old. But I think people would still pay to see him in like in a main event situation against MJF. Scorpio Sky, nope. Sodom Singh, nope. Serpentinko, nope. Sean Dean, nope. Sean Spears, nope. Sting, yeah, but not. No, they wouldn't pay to see him. Like you understand? Maybe for nostalgia reasons, but let's come on, man. Sting, he's on his way out. Swerve Strickland, <laughs> maybe, but again, I remember he was just in NXT. <laughs> Swerve Strickland, Swerve, <laughs> come on, Isaiah Scott. I've seen him in real life. I used to go to NXT every week. He's not that impressive. Stu Grayson, nobody would, pay, I, I, nobody would pay Sir Strickland in the main event. No, nah, ain't nobody watching that, man. Toa Leona, Tony Nice, a lot of these people are all just people, but WWE's cut. Trent Beretta, Vincent, Wardlow, Wardlow, yes. Will Ospreay, yes. But that's barely, most people don't know who Will Ospreay is. The females division, division, Abaddon, Anna J. No, 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 no. Athena, no. Think back to the old days. Ain't nobody gonna pay to watch. What was her name in WWE? I can't remember. Billy Starks, no. Demonte, nope. Britt Baker, eh, maybe. I doubt it. Maybe. 
Emmy Sakura, no. Cameron, no. Sheeta, no. Jamie Hayter, no. Julia Hart, under the right tutelage, maybe, but no. Statlander, no. Madison Rain, at one point, TNA. Marina Shafir, maybe. But WWE, once again, got rid of her. Mercedes Martinez, WWE got rid of her. Nyla Rose, nobody wants to see no tranny beating up the broads. Paige Van Sant. She can't wrestle. Penelope Ford, nah. Rebel, nah. Red Velvet, no, no, no. Ruby Soho, maybe. But none of these people, none of these women right here are ticket sellers or draws. Do you guys, uh, can you guys agree with me there? The, none of those people are draws. MJ, MJF, yeah. Most of the roster, 90% of the roster, your casual fan does not even know who it is. You got to be one of them internet, deep indie wrestling nerds, which I have no, no problem with you guys. You're probably watching this because you're a wrestling nerd. I'm a wrestling nerd. That's why I know who they are. But your casual wrestling fan is not going to know who they are. And let me also say this. It does not matter if you think they have better wrestling, if they have more Meltzer five-star matches. WCW had better wrestling than WWE. Is that true? WCW and Crockett Promotions was better than the WWF in terms of in-ring product. But that didn't matter, did it? Let's go ahead and move on because I want to show you guys some shit. AEW Dynamite viewers numbers since 2019. I want you to see some shit. In the very beginning, they were able to draw over a million. Then they, I want you to see the, how these numbers fluctuated. They very rarely are they able to get over a million. They drop all the way down to 700,000. You see what I'm saying? Even for special shows. You see what I mean? September, every now and then they'll creep up and barely hit a million. Do you see what I'm saying? 700,000, 700,000. So let's count how many times Dynamite has hit a million viewers. All right, the first three shows ever did. There's three, okay? So, so we got three. We're at three. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. We're scrolling down. Four on September 9th. All right, so number four is on September 9th, 2020. So we're at four. Let's, let's keep going. God, this is horrible, man. So we're at four. Okay, April 14th, 2021. Interesting moments. Huh? Okay, we're at five. And then a week later, they hit it again. So we're at six. Oh, two weeks later, they hit it again. Blood and guts. Seven. So seven total times so far. Okay, then we get to July of 2021. Eight. Nine. Ten. All of July of 2021, they did pretty good. And then August, the beginning. Eleven. 8, 9, 10, 11. Yes. And then August 20, so they started to get hot towards the end of 2021. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, that's Grand Slam. 17, 18, the two-year anniversary. They were doing really good towards, you know, towards the end of 2021. Then they all dropped until Holiday Bash. You see in the point. TBS debut, they hit a million. And then to start off 2022, they began, they started, they, they hovered right around a million. And then they dropped again. Look, 761,878. It fluctuates so much. And then, of course, August and September towards Grand Slam and all that, numbers went up again. So they're, they're, they're not too bad, but they usually hover around 800,000, maybe 900,000, 800, 900,000. Every now and then, every now and then, they'll crack 1 million. But look, 800,000, 800,000, 800,000, 900,000. That's usually what they hover at. Now, there's a reason I'm showing you all this. 609,000 when they went head to head with fucking NXT. The developmental company for the WW or brand for the WWE. Now, why am I showing you all this? Because now we're also going to say major doubt looms over AEW's ability to turn a profit. Remember, I told you a company 
makes money in, in wrestling. AEW president Tony Khan has a lot of passion for the world of wrestling, but that doesn't mean he's done a lot of questionable things over the years, blah, blah, blah. So here's, here's the statement. The statement, the dwindling ratings for AEW shows so far, one can't help but feel Warner Brothers Discovery might not renew the deal with AEW in the future. Guys, what killed WCW? TNT, not TNT, AOL, Time Warner, not re-signing WCW. And AEW can't compete with WCW, I assure you. So here we go. Brandon Thurston stated that he does not see Tony Khan pulling AEW away from Warner Discovery as he is quite loyal to them. Thurston made it clear he's confident AEW isn't profitable right now, though. I think Tony is incredibly committed to Warner Brothers Discovery. He's insanely loyal. He better be. Without them, he's fucked. I asked him recently if Fox was now a possibility for AEW with SmackDown leaving. Why would Fox sign AEW if WWE wasn't profitable for them? They're delusional, man. These motherfuckers are delusional. He would only talk about Warner Discovery and how he loves being partners there. I'm confident they aren't profitable now. They need to make $200 million a year in media rights to get to profitability. They'll get some increase. They could get triple what they're getting now. From who? It's not unreasonable, but he's going to continue to run the company and do what he's going to do, profit or not. If I'm Warner Discovery, I'm waiting to see where the NBA rights are going to land. Maybe that influences how I schedule AEW. As for why they aren't streaming already, it doesn't make sense to me. At least have next day rights on Max. So they're wanting to create a, a streaming service. Maybe they're waiting until Collision can deliver ratings, is what they say. Maybe it will turn into Rampage, where it falls off interest after a while. Of course it will. CM Punk's gone. They go against a lot of sports competition the rest of the year. What can they deliver when they go up against college football or NFL or NBA? He's basically saying they don't make no fucking money. They don't. And, and yeah, there is time until the, w, until the Warner Brothers deal is over. But check this shit out. Warner's Brothers Discovery, this is back in August, interested in picking up WWE programming. Guys, I want to make something clear to you. There is talk of Warner Brothers Discovery being interested in WWE. If, if Raw goes to Warner Brothers, it's over for Tony Khan. The AEW is dead. And I think that Triple H and Nick Khan may say fucking and pull the trigger. You put WWE over on TNT Raw, it's over for Tony Khan. It's over for Tony Khan. You think USA is going to sign him? There isn't talk of Warner Brothers Discovery being interested with the idea that they would have the entire pro wrestling market, but I don't see that at all. <laughs> That's not the way that would work. I think AEW, once their contract, that is when the, uh, the end of AEW is done. It's, it's when they lose their TV deal, just like WCW. Guys, I'm going to show you some things. I'm going to give you some numbers. TNA Impact, which most people would say is probably the worst organization we've seen in quite some time, right? Let's just look right here. We're, we're going to look at just 10 to 2010 numbers, okay? Impact was getting 1.4 million, 2.7 million, 1.1 million. What I mean is, we're talking about impact. And, and there's a whole lot of other things. There's a whole lot of other numbers I can show you. There's a whole lot of other numbers. But I'm willing to say that impact in its peak is what AEW is basically getting now. Okay? Based on statistics, we could make the argument that TNA is... Okay, here. So, November of 2011... 1.61 million viewers for Impact. November of 2012, 1.27 million viewers. These are averages. Averages. Impact has never averaged that many viewers. And this was a drop. 17.9% drop in ratings. 21% drop in audience. This was at the end of Impact's TV run. As far as live attendance goes, the average attendance for those events was 975. 
975. This was pretty much at the end of Impact's peak. You can take a look at numbers right here. This is, we're just going to go right here. This is 2,000. I want you to see this. Raw, 6.45. Nitro, 3.3. Heat, 4.1. Thunder, 2.45. Smackdown, 4.5. ECW, 1.2. It, I'm telling you right now. AEW is not competing even with those old companies. All you got to do is type in Google Trends. Take a look here. Man, AEW is literally an independent company. Literally an indie fed. Nobody's paying, nobody's fucking paying attention to no goddamn AEW. The whole country is blue. That's all WWE. You understand? Blue is WWE. Orange is AEW. This is Google Trends for the last 12 months. Let's just look at the champs. Roman Reigns versus MJF. Come on, man. You see it. The whole country. Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns, who doesn't even very, wrestle very often, is trending on Google way more than MJF. It's not hard to really understand all this. W AEW versus WWE ratings, 2022 to 2023. Okay? It's not that hard to understand. Let's see. Raw. Okay, let's look at him. Collision, 367. Let's just look at Smack. smack. Look, just look at the numbers. 300,000, 300,000. Smackdown, 2.07 million. Dynamite, 832,000. Raw, 1.390 1 1 million, 1 million. You understand? Huge difference. Huge difference. They're doubling and quadrupling a lot of times. AEW's numbers. Now, Raw's had some rough nights. But you think it's going to remain rough? SmackDown's clearly been the better show in terms of ratings. Because of the bloodline story. But now with CM Punk back, what do you think is going to happen? Raw is easily going to hit 2 million viewers again. Easily. WWE overpowers AEW once again in live attendance for the fourth week of, of November. WWE Raw and Grand Rapids had drew 7,447. AEW Dynamite. 5,000 people. SmackDown, 15,000 people. AEW and Collision, double taping, 3,400 people. Come on, man. Survivor Series, 16,809 people. Clearly, they're out selling them in tickets. Three, you can't survive as a wrestling company on 3,000 tickets. Do I want AEW to die? Hell no. But I've been here long enough and I've seen companies die and I'm telling you right now, for you people that think the AEW is somehow going to compete with the WWE, they've been hovering around the exact same their entire existence. Let that sink in for just a second. Their ratings has been about the same their entire existence. They haven't improved at all. At all. And they have no stars. Would we count maybe 10? But are they really stars? Are they Roman Reigns? Are they Seth Rollins? Are they CM Punk? Serious question. I, I think AEW, I just don't, I don't think they're better than WCW. I don't think they're better than Impact Wrestling in its peak. They may, I don't even know if they're better than Impact Wrestling right now. But that's about what AEW is. Impact Wrestling with a bigger budget. Am I right or am I wrong? And I'm not a hater. I hope it succeeds. I'm just being honest. It's a fucking group of jobbers that nobody knows. Nobody knows what an Ibushi is. 
I know, you know, but the average person that's going to spend money on pro wrestling with their family and kids, the average kid isn't like, yay, Will Ospreay. You, the grown-ass man, internet nerd, you know who he is. But that ain't saying much, bro. That ain't saying much. That's the truth. Let me know what you think. How long do you give AEW? I'll give it five years. But if if Time Warner, if Warner Brothers, I mean, if they if they stop, <laughs> if they cut the TV deal, AEW is done. They'll turn into a uh, show, uh, <laughs> like like NWA is. It's true. Let me know what you guys think. And I know it's going to piss off the fan, boys. But I, you, you're you new. I'm not. I've seen wrestling my entire life. And I'm telling you now, there's nothing special about AEW. They, they asked why they haven't improved since the start of their company. <laughs>